All right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Patricia Fripp, who is up in San Francisco. How are you doing, Patricia? I'm doing superbly well. <laughs> and I'm down here in the beautiful San Diego as usual. And uh, Patricia is a well-known, uh, top quality keynote speaker, business advisor, uh, uh, she does sales training, executive coaching, a, a thousand different things. She also no, does. No, of- I don't. I don't do a thousand different things. <laughs> and John, if you were one of my clients, I would ask you, what do you mean by things? Uh-huh. And in fact, I don't. What I do, I have expertise in one area, which is presentation skills. Mm -hmm. How I help my clients with that, I deliver presentations for them. Mm -hmm. I have executive coaching services, sales presentation skills training, leadership training. So you see, if you want to make more money in 2020, be specific. Ah, I love it. Thank you. Well, that's me putting my place. There you go. <laughs> I'm never to be invited on John's show. No, again. no, don't be silly. Don't be silly. Um, no, and I love that because actually one of my um, soapbox things is all about focus. So uh, I'm glad you brought that to um, brought that to our attention. So what we're going to talk today about is how do you double your revenue in 2020? So now that's... Uh, that's a bold statement, Patricia. So how can you double, how can somebody double their revenue in 2020? They have to improve one fundamental mistake that many of my customers make. Of course, they hire me to solve it. Mm -hmm. And if we look at most companies, wonderful companies, great advertising, great marketing, great products or services, and then they hire the best possible talent that is available. And then they put them through training on product knowledge. They might tell them exactly this is how you manage your contact relationship management so you can track what you've done and your customers. Mm -hmm. Uh, You might even know this is our competitive advantage. So they have probably technical skills, perhaps in their industry, but certainly how to run the territory. They have great product knowledge. And then they send these wonderful people out, go tell our story. If our listeners want to double their income next year, they have to, one, revisit the the message that they have, and two, Before you send anybody out to tell the company's story, you need to make sure that they've had someone like me, whether it's Mm -hmm. internal, external, is to perfect, improve their company message and how you tell the story and then train them how to do it. Because without consistency, there's no true quality. And how I get a lot of my business, I'll never forget when <laughs> Shelly Seeger called and said, help, we're, we're a technology company and we never hire anyone who has not had at least 10 years in the industry, right. technology sales. And we naturally assumed they could tell our story until we had an event and all the executives there and the salespeople came and presented. And they were appalling. So my job has been to search the globe and find the best presentation skills training. Lucky for me, you're 30 miles from headquarters. So this is it. So I don't tell people how to get in front of their prospects. Right. Just guarantee that if you, and when you are in front of your prospects, if you take my advice, your presentation will be more powerful, persuasive, and personable than your competition. So why do you think, sorry to just interrupt you, why do you think that is that um, that a lot of companies leave it to chance? Because at the end of the day, right, you can have the greatest marketing in the world and you can have the greatest messaging and the greatest website, 
but ultimately it's your salespeople who carry the message out there. And if they're all giving the message, giving a different message or a variation yes. of the message and in various different ways, well then all those people they're touching have different, differing views of your company and what you do. Exactly. And I, I challenge companies to think, if you have a good prospect, this is a company or a person you've been trying to talk to for more than a year. It might be several years you've been trying and then you say, great, we want to hear your story. The time is right. Send out someone to meet with our executive team 10 o'clock on Monday. And for whatever reason, the only person who is available is the most recent hire. Mm. Been with a company four months, only been out of training a month. Now, what a what leadership and a sales manager needs to know is that they feel confident that whoever delivers the message, that company is when they leave is going to say, "Wow, they mm. must really want our business." They sent us the best salesperson. Right. And I hope our company, I hope our salespeople represent us as well as they represented their company. Mm -hmm. and I, or sorry, go on. they might think, well, you'd think we're a company of that reputation that they'd have a better presentation. Mm -hmm. But don't they, don't they a lot of people fall into that trap then? You know, especially, uh, in fact, in some ways, you're, you're probably more likely to find the rookies actually going and looking for this kind of training and looking for this advice, whereas the more seasoned people probably think, wow, I've been, I've been doing this for years. I can present this stuff in my sleep. I don't need to tweak. I don't need to revisit it. But when you do, it's like anything to do with fundamentals. When you go and look at it again, you you with the with the critical eye, you probably find out. Yeah, once upon a time, maybe you did it well, but you you've you've lost it in in the years because you you've just assumed that you're doing it well. Obviously, results don't lie, mm -hmm. and perhaps you're making great sales. What I often find, and you're right, is if I go in with work with the team. And I have I introduce my ideas. I have people prepare, and then if we get in person, or sometimes in Zoom, sometimes in person, very often it's the newest people because they take the assignments that I give them so seriously, and they worked on it, and they got this script, and they're better. They might not be able to answer questions with the same authority as the seasoned person, but very often the seasoned people get sloppy. Mm -hmm. So if your goal, and it should be that you're gonna increase sales next year, and I would say double sales with the same database, then one, revisit your message and look at not only how you are telling your story, how does it resonate with your prospects? So for example, you have to, you've got to restructure the presentation. I would say back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, but not that long ago, every time I said, well, deliver your presentation if it, if as, as if I was a prospect, I used to hear, uh, hello, John, thank you for your time. My name's Patricia Fripp, and I come from the ABC company, and we've been in business for this long, and mm -hmm. this is our unique methodology, and these are the customers we serve, and we'd love to help you. Look, mm -hmm. nobody cares. So one, yeah. if you wanted to fritinatize your presentation, <laughs> one, you have no advantage if you sound the same as everybody else. So I tell my clients, do not thank people for their time especially if you have a high-priced offering, thank people for the opportunity to discuss how our services can help improve your condition. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is we need to, before we get to the presentation, ask good questions. So, for example, organize and structure your presentation around their challenges, yeah. their opportunities, their problems or their interests. And, and so that you, and I would say when you're in there, one, they know who you are, you're on the agenda. 
Yes. Your name might be on your slide. So I'm not <laughs> saying you don't reintroduce yourself if no mm. one has, but not as the opening line. The first 30 seconds have the most impact. So if you want to make more sales next year, I recommend the first word of your sales presentation. Now, it might be in Zoom because we mm, many yeah. presentations are not in person or in person. However, it is. I recommend the first word you say is congratulations. And then comment on what they have the right to be proud of. Because we need to put together our presentation on one fundamental principle. Everyone is more interested in themselves, their company, than they are in us. Yep. And even when people love and adore us and, and give us contracts every year, it is only because we are improving their condition yeah. and we're earning yeah. the right to have more business. 100%. So let's just say whether it's a let's let's investigate what services we're adding to this year or a brand new a brand new opportunity it's always congratulations. What do they have to be the right of proud of? And it's and if it's a new prospect preferably something that isn't on their website. It's okay if it is, but if you have to search that so they almost think, wow, how did they find that? Yeah. Now you're already different from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And then you say, thank you for the opportunity to discuss. If the Patricia for presentation skills pre training or point of view is what you're looking for. Now, if you have, and usually you talk to a champion, somebody's job is to help you understand getting ready to leave, meet with this senior leadership. Right. So you might say, John has been very generous with his time and his information. Mm -hmm. And he said that your three areas of expansion are this, this, and this. So you say, as, as you know, we have been in business for 16 years because they do. You know, yeah. these days yeah. we forget with the Internet, if we've got an appointment with leadership, they know more about us than some of the new salespeople. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 100 percent. And, and therefore, what, yeah. what you don't want to be is redundant. Yeah, so, so you can reinforce your company message. But as you know, we've been in business for 16 years. Mm -hmm. and your priority one or your interest one. So you structure your presentation with what their interest is. And then you talk about your approach, your technology and good customer stories. When you tell stories that are really perfectly crafted about good customer experiences, it is as if you are bringing your happy customers with you. Yes. Yes. And so you, you give your client success stories as you're developing your chunks of content. So this is your interest. This is what how, how we help clients like this. For example, with the ABC company, similar size, similar challenge, we did this. Mm -hmm. Now, if this sounds an approach that you'd like, our first steps would be this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. And then you go through. So you congratulate them. You structure the presentation around their interests. You add your happy customer stories with each point. Because let's face it, I mean, the one, as you said, uh, uh, obviously they can find out a lot about you today and they can find out all that information. But the one thing that they don't have access to you is your actual experiences with your yes. other customers, right? And let's face it, there's nothing that we want to hear more from a salesperson is, is that they did something with either or maybe it's a competitor of ours or somebody similar to us, somebody in the same industry, because we're we really want to know how it worked and and what impact it had. And does it sound like that that would work for us? So that for me, that's always the gold in there. But then but often people overlook that. Very true, because they've probably seen your companies. But when you say, for example, when Matt Cox who was the mm -hmm. senior vice president of the ABC company, when he right. first called, he said, help, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> Shelly, when she called me, she did say, help. <laughs> you know, we expected mm -hmm. this to happen, and it didn't. 
the and the the formula for happy customer stories is i follow the situation solution success formula mm-hmm. so the 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 six the situation deliver that in the customer's words now this is an important principle your stories have to be true yes they do not have to be 100 accurate now what i mean by that is what a story does is shrink time mm-hmm. because very often by the time we have the really important conversation it's been months of quick conversations and follow up emails till you get to the point where you have a conversation so when you shrink the story you say when i first spoke to john he said help or he said patricia i heard you are the only person or i heard you were the best person now you see when you're using the dialogue of your now happy customer Mm-hmm. You can say talk about yourself in a way you can't if you're saying, "Well, we are absolutely the best in the world." Of course, we believe that, but mm-hmm. when the customer says at, at the end of the story, "I would not have believed it possible that within three weeks of your training, our brand new hires were delivering the message as if they'd been doing it for three years, mm-hmm. not three weeks." Right. Exactly. So you and use the words. You use the words of your customers in the help and in the what I call the the success, the happy ever after. And in between, we say, John, and the methodology we use for you is just what we did for them. Bullet, mm-hmm. bullet, bullet. Because what you are doing is answering their unasked questions, mm-hmm. which is if we say yes. What's going to happen next? Mm-hmm. And I th- and I think that's just a really good, uh, extremely important point to underline is because again, I think it's something that sometimes people overlook is that when you're doing a really good job and you're selling, you know, you're selling the idea and the people are interested. Yes, that. But what does that actually mean? But what actually happens? That that is the, immediately comes into the mind of any buyer. And sometimes we we don't do the best job of explaining that. And they say this all sa- and and they go away and they're thinking, well, this all sounds very good, but I still don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> all right. Now here's a, the the opening idea in all my webinars, all my conversations, all my presentations. Uh, this simply this: when we speak, we speak to be remembered and repeated. We are there to leave information, to develop the relationship, yes, but to leave information, and we have to deliver it in a really clear, crisp, memorable way, so that we speak to the audience of our audience. You speak, because all along the process, you have Mm -hmm. an inquiry. You're not talking the CEO, you're getting information, and you have to present at every stage what it is you have to deliver, clear and concise and interesting to them. So that they repeat it and say, well, I think you might want to find 15 minutes to talk to John because Mm -hmm. he said bullet, bullet, bullet. And then as you go on, so when we speak in sales, we're speaking to be remembered, repeated. When we do it well, we're speaking to the audience of our audience. Mm -hmm. And as it goes up the chain, the audience of the audience. I think you need to hear this message. Not only was it very uniquely presented, I think we really need this. And I could even see beyond what we thought we were looking at. So the idea is you're giving the words and the phrases. And what you can put in your presentation is when you talk, when you, when you talk to your senior management, and, and I hope you will, remember to tell them, bullet, bullet, bullet what we have to do is put the words into when Mm. you talk to your senior management remember (laughs) to tell them which is a review of the key ideas you've had in Mm. your conversation is that your challenges are this 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 and we are uniquely positioned to do this 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 
because we've done it with these three companies. Yeah, and 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 that's a great and again a great message underlined because if you are if you if you deliver with too much jargon, if you're too rambling, if you jump back that's the thing, if you jump back and forth between things, if you go off on tangents, you have to bear in mind that as those people walk out of the room or leave the Zoom meeting or whatever, are they equipped to relate your message? And if you've been rambling and jumping all over the place, the chances are zero, right? Yeah. Well, that's fantastic, uh, Patricia. I think we're coming up against the uh, our, the end of our time. Uh, but before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. We know you do one thing. <laughs> superbly well in different areas. Superbly well in many ways and in many yeah. different areas. You do one yeah. thing absolutely brilliantly. Um, and that is presentations. So I would say if if your message must be memorable, Mm -hmm. Your presentation's powerful and your sales successful. Remember me, Fripp. And I, my website is Fripp, F-R-I-P-P. And remember what Fripp stands for. Frequently reinforce ideas that are productive and profitable. Oh, superb. And you can tell by uh, by what we've been talking about, and you can tell by Patricia's uh, delivery and passion that she's exceptionally good at what she does. So I would encourage you all to to check it out. And I do agree. I think uh, I think nowadays, more than ever, nearly uh, that you need really good presentation skills and you need to learn how to present, not just in person, but in in formats like this. But there's so much noise out there today that you've got to give yourself every advantage to stand out. And I think uh, this is what Patricia can do for you. So thank you very much for joining us today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.